We have two orbiters uh, that really look at the surface of Mars and operate there, but we also have two rovers that are currently operating on the planet. You talked about the marathon there recently, but our oldest rover on Mars, Opportunity, uh, has traversed over a marathon's worth of distance on the surface. So wow. we have that rover that's operating as well as our current rover Curiosity or Mars Science Laboratory that is doing an incredible amount of exploration and understanding the history of Mars, the surface of Mars, the fact that Mars once had a lot of water on it, and the fact that there is organics on the surface or near the surface of Mars. And so following that mission, we'll launch another mission in 2020 to go do further exploration. When would you expect to actually see humans make it to Mars? Can you kind of game that out based on what we've learned so far? <laughs> Well, NASA has a program to really look at getting humans at a minimum to orbiting Mars in the early 2030s, um, and then obviously landing on the surface of Mars, which is a much more difficult proposition, sometime in the 2030s. So that's the long-range plan as you look out to the Mars program. We, we've heard from a lot of astronauts this week, one of whom said that, uh, I think it was uh, Commander Kelly, when we asked him, uh, what he thought was the most realistic space movie. He, he mentioned The Martian as one of them. Is that you, your agreement, too? Uh, I actually saw that interview, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, the writer really did a lot of work in terms of making sure he talked to engineers and understood the complexities of operating on Mars and what it took. So uh, I think most of us would agree that was a very realistic movie from an operating on Mars perspective. We, we see so many headlines constantly, uh, it seems, these days about new things that are happening in space, either from the government sector or the private sector. And, and there, there was this uh, news about the Cassini probe that had been circling Saturn, just crashing into the, uh, into the planet a few weeks ago. I know that was by design, but what, what did we learn with that? Well, overall, the Cassini mission was an incredible mission because it really gave us insights into that planetary system uh, around Saturn. Uh, really the moons of Saturn are incredibly interesting. You look at Titan, Titan is a very large moon. It has methane oceans and lakes and rivers and rain. Uh, we found that the moon Enceladus is actually a water moon with water below the surface mm -hmm. and we can see these jets of water shooting out into space like geysers. Uh, we understood a lot now about the complexities of the ring structure and how moons are forming inside those rings so uh, but that the the fact that there's water in those moons in the outer solar system is a very important finding what about Europa Europa is a moon of Jupiter again a water moon and uh, that is our next big mission to the outer planets JPL is currently building uh, the Europa Clipper which is our orbiter that would really go around Jupiter and Europa to understand the the moon and then following that up, we'll send the Europa lander, uh, probably in the mid-20s, to really go down to the surface of Europa and examine it directly. So it's a water moon. It has probably two to three times the amount of water that the entire Earth has. And that's wow. one moon of many in the outer solar system. You know, been doing this for a long time, and when you look at the, the setup for how, where things are today, there are so many more private enterprises that are getting involved and partnering with NASA or doing things on their own. When you look at sp space exploration, are you more optimistic than you were 20 or 30 years ago or less? How, how, do, you, how do you see things? Uh, absolutely. I mean, if you look at what NASA is doing in terms of the MAN program to really develop the systems that go to, the, to Mars and beyond, if you look at what we're doing from a scientific perspective to explore our solar system and our universe, and then you look at what's happening with the commercial industry, the SpaceX's, the Blue Origins, um, you, know, you know, Virgin Galactic, all those companies that are developing commercial capability to get humans into either suborbital space or orbital space. And that can only be good for the nation and for exploration because ultimately you want to start to commercialize as much of this as you can. Uh, and that's what they're focused on is at least the rocket part of this is getting humans and equipment and experiments into orbit cheaply. And that's one of the key drivers that we have to have to further exploration. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.